In this video, I'm going to take you through my workshop, tool by tool, tell you what I paid for it, I'm going to tell you what I like about the tools and what disappoints me about the tools. Um, I'm doing this because when I was a beginner, I mean I still really am a beginner, but um, you know, as I've maybe moved on to a little bit more, let's say intermediate, and I've acquired these tools and I can take on the projects that these tools allow me to take on, um, I've gotten some expertise with regard to knowing what I like and what I don't like. And I never saw that before in any other video where you were taken through tool by tool. At the heart of any wood shop is going to be the table saw. This one's mine. Uh, I picked it up off Craigslist or actually here in Quebec is uh, Kijiji. And uh, it's a Delta. I think it's from like the early 80s. And uh, it wasn't in such great shape when I got it. It used the old uh, jet fence. And, uh, and I hated it, and the tube was bent and it didn't work well. So for my birthday last year, I got myself one of these, uh, these third-party add-on fences. And it's kind of like the T2 Delta, except you can't really get it here in Canada. It was a pain. So I got this from Busy Bee Tools, and it was 250 bucks. The table saw I got for 100 I added this uh, paddle stop right here, uh, the paddle switch, which is way better. I had, like, it came with some weirdo light switch mounted on the side and it was uh, really unsafe. This, uh, if ever you see me uh, on any of my videos, I sometimes hit the stop with my hip uh, and, it's, uh, and it's a lifesaver that way, uh, sometimes quite literally. Um, and, you know, I cleaned up quite a bit. There was a lot of surface rust. It's not perfect now, but with some paste wax, it works really, really well. I mean, everything slides. This uh, miter gauge didn't come with this handle. I had to fabricate my own. Uh, and that's something I like to do sometimes, working with metal and so I actually really like this table saw, um, and it's accurate and it's great. And uh, you know, I've set it so that this little indicator is is accurate, which is great. On it, I use the uh, Freud 52 Thin Kerf combo blade, so it does both rip and cross cut reasonably well. I don't have any complaints. The only complaint I have about this saw is uh, you know things I've been getting from comments on uh, on Reddit and on YouTube is that I should get a dust collector. And I don't have one. You're right, I should get a dust collector. Uh, I don't see how that works on a table saw like this, to be honest with you. Even if I did have one, where does it go? There's no port, and it's all open everywhere. Uh, eventually, I'd like to get a cabinet saw and maybe wire the garage for 220 Until then, uh, this one is working good enough for me. What I keep on my table saw, which is I always keep a push stick. I've been getting a lot of comments that I don't use one enough. You just don't see me use it, but I promise you, I use it. Look at that wear on that. I got this design from uh, John Heise, actually. I thought it was a really good one, and it's worked really well for me. I always keep a pencil, tape measure, and one of these electronic um, angle finders for the blades, for the table saw blade. I find this uh, incredibly uh, valuable and a huge time saver. Next up on the Price is Right is actually the first uh, real stationary tool that I got when I bought my house is this miter saw. It's from King and I got it for a hundred bucks. Uh, the saw is not great by any means, but it is a 10 inch sliding compound uh, miter saw. And I have no real complaints, except for the fact that I kinda, every once in a while, if I've jarred it, I've gotta realign it and I use it with the square. And, uh, and then it's fine. I mean, really, it's not meant to be a precision instrument, uh, but I'm happy with it. It usually doesn't always sit on this work table. I sometimes tuck it away. It's, Pretty rare that I'm using it often, but I'm working on a project right now where uh, where I do need to have it out, so it's convenient to be able to rip here and then to just walk over here and cross cut. Uh, yeah, there is saw, uh, there is dust everywhere, but I sweep constantly, and you can see the floor of my garage is tiled and it's uh, and it's relatively clean. Up next is my router table, which you can't actually see, uh, but this is a Makita uh, one horse router that I've mounted upside down on a piece of melamine uh, and I got it for 30 bucks this one actually from Craigslist uh, and I'm very very happy with this router it's a fixed base I do want to get a plunge because there's some functionality that you get there that you just don't have with a fixed base um, you can't really see what I have here although I have shown it in previous videos but I'm using it as a paint station I I staple a garbage bag on top of here so that it, I keep it clean I'm actually working on another step stool for a client right now but uh, I'm very happy with this, and I actually, it's very interesting, is uh, I made this fence for it. I actually intended to make a uh, homemade table saw 
but that didn't work out, so I landed up using this for the router table, and I'm very happy with it. So you've got uh, a threaded rod in there. And that gets tightened up there. And, and there. Next is my 12-inch uh, twelve inch lunchbox planer. It's also a Delta, and I'm pretty sure it's from the mid to late eighties. I actually got all the manuals, a spare set of knives, um, and the thing was in mint condition. I got it from an older woodworker. Uh, this one I got from Craigslist. It was a hundred dollars. I had to drive pretty far to get it, but it was worth it because I used it all the time, um, and I'm really happy with it. It even came with a with the knife setting jig, which doesn't always happen, um, and I'm very happy with this. Up next is the uh, Craftsman Benchtop Jointer. It's a six inch capacity, but it's got very short beds. This is really only good for short pieces of wood. It's not good for anything uh, long, and it's pretty lightweight, and the fence is not great. Um, yeah, so I'm not super thrilled with it, and I definitely will be upgrading this unit in the future, but for now it was kind of a, a must have as far as the smaller projects that I do work on so that fits that need pretty well uh, except that I I will need to upgrade this tool in the future but uh, I needed something at the very minimum right now and this was uh, 50 I don't know if I mentioned it but it was fifty dollars off of uh, off Kijiji or Craigslist I can't even remember this is my little drill press I think it's an 8 or a 10 inch I've been pretty happy with it um, the only thing that really bugs me about it is the way that the table slides up and down um, it's not like a, a crank, it's more like a loosen this and then, you know, shimmy it up the pole. Uh, and I hate that. I'd really much rather have, you know, one of those, uh, you know, sort of winders and it climbs or descends on its own. That would have been better. Um, and I really eventually will upgrade to a bigger model because the capacity on this is pretty small. It's very short and close to the pole. So this is really more for, for hobby. Um, I don't have any issue with the power on it. This is my drill, uh, it's a 12 volt Bosch, and I was using it as a driver as well as a drill for a long time, um, and I just found that it was really annoying to constantly have to change out the drill bit for the, uh, for the driver. Uh, so eventually I broke down and I got this Black & Decker. This, was, uh, this by the way was $80 off of Craigslist and it came with a charger and two batteries and it was basically brand new, so I considered that one kind of a steal of a deal. Uh, this one was, also $80, but I got this one at Canadian Tire. It was on sale. Um, it came with a charger and a battery, and it's a 20 volt. And I have to say, I am very happy with it. Uh, it performs exceptionally well. I don't have any issue with it. This is my jigsaw. Uh, it's the only thing I have for cutting curves, specifically. I mean, I've got the table saw for cutting straight, and I've got a circular saw for cutting straight. But for cutting curves, this is the only thing that I have. Uh, and I got it for 60 bucks, which wasn't a steal of a deal, except that I really think the Makita holds its value quite well. This was $100 new, so 60 bucks used, and it was really clean. A whole bunch of spare blades, uh, the hard case, and the instruction, uh, the instruction book. I've been extremely happy with this tool, and I would uh, highly recommend it. Under my workbench is my circular saw. It's just a scale saw. I'm not even going to bother taking it out, to be honest with you. I got it for $40 15 years ago at uh, Canadian Tire when I was uh, building a homemade uh, projector. I don't know if anybody remembers LumenLab.com, but you could build your own projector and I needed, uh, I needed something to cut accurate straight lines. Uh, over there is my, uh, I'm not going to take that out either, but it's a mouse sander. It's what I use for detail sanding. Uh, for the most part, it's what I, I use all the time. My other sander is a uh, Craftsman belt sander. It's a 321, so three wide, 21 inch long. Um, and this thing is just a monster. It's just, it's really not an accurate tool and it's really more for leveling, so it's, it's not something that I use all the time and it's incredibly heavy. Some people have talked about issues with the, uh, with the belt wandering uh, I, while running. I haven't had that issue. I've been very happy with it. This was, uh, this was 20 bucks off Craigslist, so that was a steal of a deal. This is my biscuit joiner. Um, it's by Mastercraft, which is uh, the Canadian Tire home brand. I don't know if you guys know what that is in the States. You probably don't. But if you're Canadian, you certainly do. This was a birthday present uh, for my brother, and uh, I was super happy to get this because I really needed something to help me align boards when, when gluing them up and, and, doing, uh, and making wider boards. 
Uh, I've used it a few times, not as many as I'd like. I plan on using it a lot more um, and showing it in a, in a couple of upcoming videos. But I've been very happy with this. I mean, it's kind of a, a great tool, and I think everyone who's doing woodworking should have a uh, have one of these. This might be silly, but this is just a regular like desk fan, and I use it all the time to dry paint and to um, dry stain and that kind of stuff. And I find it amazing for speeding up dry time, uh, and I think everyone should have one. Okay, so up here is my pegboard, uh, and I've got a lot of my tools up here, the stuff that I use most frequently, uh, and a lot of stuff that I don't, to be honest. Uh, the rest of it is put away on my shelves here, including my Dremel and socket set and electrical set and that kind of stuff. You know, I've got a lot of parts and components and projects down here, and I've got uh, my soldering or soldering iron up here and, you know, the third hand stuff. Um, and let me tell you what I don't like about pegboard, okay? These little, little tool holders, they just always just come right out and they fall and I must have a whole pile of them behind my bench. I hate that. I plan on uh, taking this down and putting up a plywood sheet and making individual tool holders uh, similar to what uh, Matthias and, uh, and John Heise have done. I think that's great. And a lot of woodworkers have done it, obviously, but I think that's much better. Permanent tool holders that don't flip and flop all over the place. I really, uh, I really have to get, have to get on that. Speaking of something that I have to do, and most woodworkers have, is I have a clamp rack here, and it's basically just an L bracket that I drilled into the studs, um, and it's just held on there. For the quick clamps, it's not really a big deal, but for my F clamps, I have to twist and tighten them to get them on there, and then obviously twist and and uncouple them every time I want to use them and it's a really big pain so I'm gonna make a real clamp rack um, over here is a paint or open paint cabinet that I, I built and I put up there with a French cleat this is all made out of pallet wood by the way so the price is free and a lot of these clamps I either got on sale which are these ones which are my long clamps and they suck they suck hardcore uh, they're just really terrible clamps uh, these ones I got off Craigslist, all three for 20 bucks. This one is actually a, a record clamp from England, and it's phenomenal. It works so well, so smooth. These ones are uh, Chinese knockoffs, and they work okay. And then these are some quick clamps that I have, along with uh, these guys over here, and I have some spring clamps over by the, uh, by the workbench. And obviously I need more. Everybody says they need more, but so far this has been, this has been enough. Uh, down here, I keep my block plane and my smoother. This is my demo saw. It's a Porter cable. I got it for 90 bucks at Home Depot. Um, I'm very happy with it. It's a 6 amp. You've seen me use it in the uh, in my previous video in taking apart the pallets. I have no issues with it. I think it's great. Um, I don't see any need to spend any more money on something better than this. The last tool that I'm going to talk about is the shop vac. I got this for 40 bucks at Walmart and it is indispensable. I wish I had a tinier shop vac to clean this shop vac because it gets very dirty. But uh, I do find it uh, incredibly valuable to have this in the shop. Uh, just to clean up the table saw and to clean up the miter saw and every other tool, frankly. I sweep the floor, but the tools do need to be vacuumed, including the, uh, the drill press. So I hope you found this video valuable. Uh, like if you like, don't like if you don't like, and please subscribe. Thanks guys.